Hi, it's Kevin here, and welcome to part two of my uh, medieval um, themed videos that I'm creating here. And this is a medieval chair. I think it's quite old. I'm not exactly sure, and I think it's I think it's Norwegian, uh, but I can't be sure. But I just really like the look of it. I like the uh, details of it, and um, and you'll see that going forward. And as the title suggests, um, I use a lot of alphas uh, in this video and ZBrush is pretty awesome for that sort of thing, using alphas to create detail on the surface of your models. As you can see here, I start building this object using basic shapes, which is a pretty standard way of uh, creating objects, getting all the shapes right, getting the size right, pushing and pulling it around until you get the uh, shape that you're looking for. Um, it's you know, it's standard practice for most people, I think, for most artists, just to get the get the shapes right, and um, and you can start building and, and adding the detail on top of that and pulling it around to perfect it and this is pretty pretty straightforward it's just a lot of basic shapes let me show you the picture of that and here is uh, the picture that I used as a reference and you can see from this picture that I split up the object into lots of basic shapes and um, before I started because it's always good to really look at your object break it down and create the sort of basic shapes uh, before you get started and identify them basically and you can see by the modeling here that I'm not worried about what it really looks like I'm not worried about the polygons I kind of just pull it all over the place and that's fine at this stage you don't need to worry too much but you can see there's a lot of rough uh, polygon stretching going on and that's okay because it kind of gives it a bit of texture later on, which is quite cool. See, I use a live boolean to create that curve on that arm, and that's a really useful tool of ZBrush. Used a lot, oh, I use it a lot. I love medieval objects, they're just so uh, interesting and they sort of tell a story, you know. This object here that, this, that I'm showing you, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure what it is, uh, but I can imagine a lot of people sitting on this way back when, way back in the day. <laughs> I got a feeling it might have been a latrine. I'm not entirely sure, but it kind of looks like it because it's got a lid that you can open up. And it's got this little, this, this hole on the front. Uh, I don't know quite what that's for. I don't know what it is. It's just a chair. It's got really 
fantastic patterns and shapes on the sides of it and um, it was obviously very I'd say almost a regal object it's got these handles these weird handles that are used to lift yourself up out of it and and obviously one of them is broken off on the left hand side there but I modeled both of them on this object as you can see there And now I start adding some detail to the object. I just go straight for Dynamesh because what I wanted to do with this object is keep it keep it rough and ready. I didn't want all the edges to be sharp because there is no sharp. If you look at the object um, down the left hand side, you'll see everything's wobbly, nothing's perfect. The surfaces are wobbly, <laughs> you know, it's, they weren't particularly well made back in them days. In terms of you know precision engineering, it wasn't. Like it's was probably all hand carved, and um, I just wanted to sort of keep that look to it, keep that look about it. And in this video, I'm just creating the object, but in the next one that I'm going to release soon, you'll see me texture it um, in Substance Painter and get it as close to that as I possibly can. Where you saw it at the on the picture at the front at the front of this video. So that was my goal and uh, it took me quite a while, actually longer than I thought it was going to. And I thought it was gonna be quite easy, but it was the detail that, that takes the longest really. You start making, you know, stop, even though I'm adding detail, I'm doing sort of the big basic shapes pretty much. But the big thing about this is the use of alphas and you'll see that in a moment because it kind of you know you can using alphas you can speed up the process enormously because imagine seeing that pattern on the side there imagine trying to create that manually would just manually would just take a long time so you know using a sort of black and white image of those shapes i didn't copy it exactly uh, it's estimated just some shapes that sort of fit with the theme. And here's the first one going on now. And that is just using the alpha black and white image. Um, and then I kind of do things to it to sort of make it look bit, make it look a little older. duplicate it to the other side and then on top of the alpha that I've already applied to this I add a wood grain alpha and straight away you get a sort of a pretty cool look fairly easy to achieve using ZBrush at least Course, this goes on the, the more detailed one goes on to um, be used as the one that bakes my normal map onto my lower mesh model which has none of this detail on it at all until I bake the normal map onto it and um, it works exceptionally well I was really surprised how well it worked actually and the good thing about ZBrush is that you can use the project feature of ZBrush to get really accurate um, versions of low and high because you when you project the low it projects it to the nearest it can possibly get to on the of the highest version that you're defining and um, so they're very very close so when you could bring it into the ZBrush and you bake it you don't need to use a cage you, you can just use the high uh, definition model and the low definition model that you've uh, created in ZBrush. So that's me just using masking now to 
to find those shapes and I use masks sharpen just to sharpen up that edge a little bit because it can be quite soft when you're doing uh, masking in ZBrush. But fortunately it's got a, a sharpen mask edge feature and that was just a hole I made I'm not quite sure what the hole does but there we go and there's the second major I say second that's another, another uh, alpha map I used for a pattern on the front and it's close to the original but it's not the original pattern but it's kind of along the same theme as the original pattern thought it came across quite well actually and then when you lay the wood grain on the top of it it kind of takes it back a bit which is quite good because initially when you see it, it's quite um, you know it's really pronounced and, we, and because of the wear and tear on it you don't want it that pronounced and the picture I had had a big crack across the front which I just painted in there I just carved in there using my hand I did a lot of stuff by hand because I think this object was hand carved like I said um, so you want to get that same feeling in the actual sculpt model so that's what I did and you certainly get that rough <laughs> look at those lines wobbly as anything and, uh, and that's good because that's giving it the character that I'm looking for I mean you can do those dead straight normally if you wanted to if you're doing a you know, modern and engineered object you would have position lines and you can do that in Z brush as well but you know I wanted this to be a lot more handcrafted if you like you know that feeling handcrafted and well used well worn especially those handles they were uh, uh, just joined the handles to the legs at that point because you can see in the photograph that's what they are so I join them and then I start sort of carving out some more of the de details I've got mirror on here so if I do it on the left it, it appears on the right so I do use mirror for a lot of this stuff but not a great deal because it was you know it it's not a mirrored copy I, I, don't, I didn't want a mirror copy but this was a particularly detailed piece of geometry and I do change it a bit later I turn off mirror and add its own unique detail to each one of them This is me carving out sort of mortise and tenon joints, or not real ones obviously, but um, to make it look like there are some in the object, because there are, they did use mortise and tenon joints, um, and I know that because I used to be a carpenter a long time ago. Um, there was, I didn't do them all, I just did some, and it gives you that impression that, you know, it's actually been held together using proper um, you know proper techniques that they would use to make these things and that's kind of gives it a bit of that story all the all the marks and all the dirt and all the blemishes the twistedness and the dents scratches all that stuff tells a story so you want to get as much as that onto your object as you possibly can Dynamesh here to make this to make these details and I'm putting the wood grain now on the legs using an alpha it's a lot of alpha use in this I could have done the same with these actually but I didn't I did it by hand instead I'm not sure why they're 
handles were so delicate like that. I think it was designed so you could sort of pull yourself up out of the chair, which is interesting. Or out of the... Is it a chair? I think it is. Well, at its basic level, it's some sort of chair that you sit on. Um, if it's a latrine, then um, same reason, I guess. More wood grain using alpha. And there was no panthers, and I kind of smoothed it out a bit once I did it because it is a smooth sort of part of the wood where people would sit on it quite a lot. And I did take a good look at the reference material I had, and um, you could see that it was, you know, well used, well sound particularly in that on the seat part. Just adding more patterns, more detail, just doing it by hand. Looks rough, but when it's done, it all works well together. Um, which is clearly the object, the objective. Probably a lot of Zebrush artists cringing. What are you doing that for? At the, at the sight of this, because I'm, I'm making it look pretty rough, but it is deliberate. That's what I'll say. You want to get as close to the object as you possibly can, and I could only find find um, sort of half a dozen references to this object on the internet. Um, so I was limited, I couldn't turn it around, I couldn't lift it upside down or anything like that, so I couldn't see the underneath of it. I just had sort of photographs that looked like they were taken by tourists or um, sort of a museum where it lives, and I'm pretty sure it's Norway somewhere, it's a Norwegian object. But it's very interesting, I've never seen one like this before. You know, I know ZBrush is used quite a lot for characters and stuff, but I use it a lot for environments and props. And in fact, doing props using ZBrush is sometimes a lot quicker and you get some really nice results because when you're sculpting, it, there's no real constraints. You, you kind of go a bit crazy, so you build the object exactly how you want it and you sculpt details onto it and it's really cool. And then you can just um, optimize it to create a simple version. And then uh, using Z Remesher or some other technique, I usually use Z Remesher and then I kind of optimize that further into, in an application if it's for a game. And then, um, you know, I don't use the UV mapping in ZBrush much, only if I'm doing an object that's just for show so I won't care about what the layout of it and I'll just unwrap it inside ZBrush and it'll be done sort of, sort of thing um, and I won't care what it what it kind of looks like or how it's laid out um, but if it's for a game you have to be a bit more careful and lay it out nicely maybe share your UV space with some other object um, don't want to waste UV space in a game, that's for sure. But yeah, I, I usually take it through uh, and then I export it as an FBX, so that's kind of my basic process. And this video will take you up to the point where I export it as an FBX basically. And then in the next video, I'm going to show you how to bring it into Max because I do some optimizing and some UV layer in Max because 
I wanted to get it all on one page, basically. Apart from, yeah, all on one page. Apart from the metal that I add to this later. And then um, I take it from there into Substance Painter. Just adding softness to the edges here, you know, just carving bits of it out, denting it. You know, I'm not, I'm not being too precious, which is cool. And you can see here now, I use the curve uh, spline to create um, like a metal strip. You can see the metal strip in the photograph down there. This is going to be my copper metal strip that comes down the arms on both sides and goes along the top of the headrest. And um, really easy to create that in ZBrush. Really fantastic. As I, and I just leave it as a separate object. Object. I don't join it. Um, to anything and then when I put it into Max I give it its own material ID and unique material space UV space just because it is of such different um, type of material from the wood just wanted it to look you know like I said it wasn't for a game so I just wanted to look the best I could uh, get it pretty much without going too crazy because uh, I eventually want to do all these objects I'm going to bring them all into Marmoset and I've already started creating the scene as you saw at the beginning and just create this medieval sort of space full of all these objects that's my plan and it's really fun it's just like a little project I'm doing for myself really just to keep my skills up to date and um, you know, and do something interesting, especially at these these, well, these times, tough times we've all got going on at the moment. So um, it's quite interesting to do a little project like this. Now I could have copied uh, one metal strip over to the other side, but it's just as quick to just draw a spline and let it create it itself and I wanted the, the, the rivets or the, whatever they are and the holes to be in different places on both sides so I didn't want to use the same the same strip see it kind of smooth and smooth it down a little bit because this even the metal would have been there for a long time and it's kind of smoothed its way out over time and then this is why I generally do this with my objects is create a, a base floor as you can see the back legs there weren't long enough it just gives you some makes you know grounds of the object basically uh, which is pretty cool and um, you yeah. know makes it right basically now I go to work on the back of it and do this pretty quickly Now do the metal along the top, the metal strip, exactly the same technique. Just use the line curve feature and just draw out the shape that I want all the way along. Now I just move it and bend it sort of into shape because in real life copper is pretty, really, uh, copper is pretty bendy actually it's quite soft metal so you can sort of bend it and twist it quite easily into shape and I wanted to get that kind of look across as well and you can see it's quite it's quite bendy there it looks quite bendy and when I texture it later it looks quite convincing so these are the rivets missing quite a few obviously over time they've fallen out just not there anymore whatever for whatever reason and um, Oh, 
quite fun putting them in actually, it just feels quite satisfying. Really, and some holes. Again, hand drawn, yeah, all wobbly, and that's how they are. I said the real ones look, they look wobbly as anything. It's kind of weird. They clearly didn't have any um, machines to create this stuff, and it was all done, all done by hand. And uh, the carpenter who obviously made this was not, you know, he wasn't too worried about precision, so. Um, that's kind of the attitude I took when I started creating this. I didn't, I wasn't too worried, I kept doing it wrong, but I thought I'd leave it. You now I'd leave the mistakes and leave the bits and pieces, and it turned out pretty good. And what I do here is I'm masking, um, masking bits of it off. As I put the grain down because I want to make sure I get the grain in the right direction because um, going you can see the back there's horizontal and the legs are vertical so it's important that it comes out like that because otherwise that's another detail that you can do wrong and it just looks bad you know it's convincingly wrong <laughs> if you know what I mean so getting those sort of details right is um, part of observing observing the object that you're creating and make sure that it's telling a true story if you like because having the, the grain horizontal on the legs just is not a good piece of wood you know the strength just wouldn't be there it's just me adding some final details splits and cracks in the wood and later on when i come to um, texture this like i say it's I use the, the ambient occlusion map that I create from all these to um, add some real dirt into those cracks. And, uh, it, to good effect, it look, looks really good. Okay, so that's pretty much my process for creating the ZBrush model. I'm doing a bit of optimization here, as you can see. Um, and then I finish up. There's the final ZBrush model. I hope you enjoyed that. Stick around for the next one, which is going to be released anytime soon. You know, literally next the next working day after I've published this one. And I will see you there. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.